and hopefully the lighting is good. Hopefully everybody can hear me. We have just now started to record this. So just to let you know, oh, but there we go. These meetings will be recorded. They will be on our website so that if you would like to view this one again, you certainly can. If you'd like to share it with anyone else, you certainly can. So keep that in mind and that probably will be up probably by tomorrow. I'm very, very fortunate. I have a uh, Zoom team and again, part of them have moved on to uh, travels and, and different things. But Deb, who you heard me talking to, Deb Jones is our webmaster. And Deb is uh, at her home helping to monitor all of this stuff. So there's a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes. Plus you saw the many folks that we had on there. I do wanna uh, let you know that if anybody is interested at all in helping me with AV, oh, she's fine. If anybody's interested at all, please come forward. We'd love to have you. I, I dragged several people already who did not think they knew AV and they were fabulous. They did a great job, but we could always use extra helpers to go a little bit quicker. But anyway, with that said, let me move that next. Whoop, I didn't wanna move that guy. Okay, let me move. There we go. There we go. I would like to welcome BAPS. BAPS is Bell County Area Parkinson Support Group. And so uh, Deb, can you, I'm gonna stop the share screen for a second and let's spotlight BAPS so that our folks can meet these new folks. And let me, let me get, oh, wait. Okay, let me. Uh, da, 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 da. Share a screen. Come on now. That's gonna create a problem. Uh, let's see. Oh, now I gotta get my. Oh, don't, 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 don't want to end the meeting. I'm supposed to be able to get my floating things back. Cancel. Oh golly gee, minimize. Cancel. Ah, uh, anyway, Deb, I got to share, I got to do a stop share screen here. Mm -hmm. There it is. Now I got it back. Okay, now I can do the stop share screen. Okay, Deb, can you spotlight BAPS? And hopefully they can show can up. Can you in. hear me? Yes. Great. This is the BAPS group meeting at Garden Estates in Temple. I had to step outside because you were getting feedback from my audio. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Yes, we got them nice, big, and that is wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Super. Thank That's you. For exciting. Yeah. If you can't hear me, just let me know. I can always move this thing up closer. Usually my husband says I'm too loud. So, you know, I have to, I have to, yeah, I got to walk a fine line. But anyway, Gail, I want to say thank you so much. Gail is just helping. I had got a, quite a few inquiries from Colleen, Harker Heights and Temple that they wanted to start a support group. And so I called out to Gail and she helped get these guys together. And so I just would like to say welcome and thank you for joining us. And yes, all right, I'm gonna go on and uh, we can take that spotlight off now, Deb. And there we go, she's got me back on. I'll come back to my screen. Okay. So you can see this is kind of a, it, this isn't hard. It's just exciting to try to do some of this stuff. <laughs> Okay, what I'm going to do now, this is when I hide this so that my group, y'all don't see them all that all the time, that black line will go. This is July 28th. This is our agenda. And first and foremost, and I'll be ringing them up here, David Ott and Medtronic are meeting sponsor, which means that they brought the cookies and water and I'll call him up here in a second. We have our exercise sponsor, which is basically going to be Janie. And Janie Bush is with All Care Therapies, who are our speakers. And so they'll be up here in a moment. And you can see there's the speakers that we have right there. They're going to be talking about physical, occupational, and speech therapies. So all of those. And then we'll do a little exercise with Janie on vocal exercise. But then I have a special treat for all of you guys. We will 
do our, and show you our dance instructor for our dancing class. Then, if you notice down here, door prizes. I've just got to make sure that everybody get a ticket. Everybody gets a ticket. If you did not get a ticket, raise your hand and uh, I will get Barbara or somebody or Steven to be sure and give you a ticket because we've got some great door prizes. All right. And uh, we'll go on and call up our meeting refreshment sponsor. Thank you, David. You're just awesome. And I'm gonna hold the camera on you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. And I'll try to get, the, can everybody hear me all right? Okay, very good. Um, Thank you, Mary Jane. Thank you guys for putting this together. This is really a phenomenal. It's one of the best there is in support groups. So again, not enough kudos to you guys. Um, my name is David Ott with Medtronic. Um, and real quick, I was going to announce just some exciting news about uh, a new partnership that uh, we've established. This is also listed on the uh, the GAPS webpage, I believe. Um, but most people did not know that Apple that makes the iWatch, iPhone, they had a movement disorder software that was built into the newer versions of the iWatch and the phone that was never released until about a month ago. So when they released that, what happened was there's a, part, there's a company that does the data that pulls this information and Medtronic has partnered with them. So what does that mean? Well, through this partnership, there's a program that's been created um, that anyone that can sign up through this, so you can actually independently sign up as just a patient. If you have PD, um, if you have any type of tremor, dyskinesia, things like that, um, or if we it just opened up, so we're also enrolling um, movement disorder neurologists in this area, they're getting signed up. So there's a possibility they can sign you up also, but if you actually can sign up yourself and through signing up, you'd be put on a wait list that you will get a free iWatch, no cost, or iPhone, whichever works with the software un locked so it can track what can it do it can track tremor dyskinesia sleep med usage other things um, the great part about this is if you do sign up put it in the wait list you'll get called um, through this company that we were working with called rune labs they'll call you get everything set up they'll organize it for you and all you have to do is wear it it monitors that information everything is anonymized so it's not like information is just being shared around and then if you turn back into, uh, let's see, your movement disorder neurologist, neurologist, they're signed up. That information that's been gathered can then go into their portal. They can then see that along with med usage, and it records all this data for them just to be able to objectively look at. So they can actually see, oh, you're getting more tremor at this time or during this day or at these moments. And then that can better correlate. So you don't have to be implanted with DBS. This could be pre-DBS, this could be maybe not even DBS is a, you know, necessarily a thing, but if you have the tremor to dyskinesia, it's something you'd be interested in, you can talk with me the, uh, on the website. There's, uh, you'll see a little QR code. Um, feel free to come by, talk with me about this. It's just released, like we've just released this. All this has happened in the last month um, in this uh, new siding partnership. So feel free to contact me. I've got some cards back here also. I'll be here afterwards. Um, and there's even some sh uh, slips here with a QR code that if you guys are interested in doing right now, I can give you one of these slips and get that set up. All right, I'll be brief. Mary Jane, I'll turn it right back to you. Thank you, David. And I just want to let you guys all know that I did go on and uh, sign up for this for my husband, Dave. Dave, I signed you up, baby. <laughs> and uh, for some of you who are fairly new, and I know this fair, y'all are new, I have been now the facilitator for Reddit uh, going on 12 years. And Dave, my husband, uh, has had Parkinson's now for a little over 20 years. And so I'm always signing him up for all sorts of stuff. But anyway, I signed you up. This is on our homepage of our website to get this device, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Moving right along. Uh, we will be exercising with um, Janie Bush later on. And so we'll come back to that one. I want to talk about our dancing. The if you'll need to stay to the end of the meeting and our dance instructor will be here. Her name is Luz. And as you were here at First Baptist Church, that's uh, university or also known as Highway 29. The Grand Living is that real big facility that's just right across the street. 
that's where we're doing our dance classes. And it is a lot of fun. Several of us have already been going and it's just fun. It's just a fun opportunity because you're going to learn that my, my mantra is to educate, exercise, and socialize. And that's exactly what we'll be doing. So we all, I'll introduce you to Luz a little bit later on. But we also have another class. And Stephen, if you'll come on up, please, sir. Uh, we have another one. By the way, these are free. These are free that we're working to get grants and to get funding to pay the instructors. But they're free to you. We do our vocal exercise music therapy. Music therapy is just singing. But we're very fortunate to have Stephen Darrow, who is also the chairperson for uh, our board. And uh, he is a speech and language pathologist and he leads us in vocal exercises. Thank you, Mary Jane. Um, we're doing Mondays at 10 a.m. right now. The days that I'm there, we do 30 minutes of voice exercise and 30 minutes of, of singing exercise. Um, we are going to be doing that for about another month, at which point at which point we're going to move to the afternoons. You'll get plenty of notice. This We won't spring this on you. And we are also hoping to bring Janie Bush on board, which I'm very excited about. Um, and we'll, we'll have that all synced up, make sure that nobody will be surprised by any of this. Um, I think August 22nd will be her first day. So it'll be me until then. Um, August 8th is the next time I'll be there. I really hope to see you there. Um, we, our goal is to keep you loud, your voice matters, and make sure that you're heard whenever you wanna be. And to really answer any questions you have, like Mary Jane said, this is all free. So please, if you're local, you should be taking advantage of uh, voice, music, and the dancing thing with Luz that she was talking about earlier. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Hey, I do want to introduce someone It's not on my slides, but Robert, if you'll please stand up. And this is Robert Crane. Robert Crane is a professional photographer who has uh, volunteered to help me out by taking pictures. And these are some of the pictures that you'll see on our website. If for any reason anyone does not want to have their picture made, you know, uh, speak now forever, hold your peace, you know, but, in a, but they're just... Yeah, I'll be the sensor. But they're just pictures. And, and as you've looked at my website, we don't put a whole lot of stuff on, but it helps with the newsletter and everything like that. And of course, with him being a professional, he's a lot better than I am at taking pictures. But uh, anyway, thank you, Robert, for coming. You're very faithful and I appreciate it. All right, moving right along. I had to tell you about this, you guys. This is really, really good. Many of y'all came to our meeting last month. And the last month meeting, we had a big symposium that was put on or co-hosted. We helped co-host it, but they basically did all the work. It's called Parkinson Movement Disease, uh, the Parkinson Movement Disorder Alliance. And this group is fantastic. Okay, they are coming back to Georgetown. Now they're gonna do a different type of program. And I would like to encourage all of y'all to, to come because what it is, it's a support group leader training. And you might say, I don't want to be a support group leader. Well, that's okay. But it, it is a training to help you to help me even. So it's and it's free. And if you want to get away for a night, they are actually, uh, they've got a hotel rooms for you free at the Sheridan right here in Georgetown. So it's free, free, free. Also, also they are supplying all of the meals and a happy hour. I mean, free. I mean, you can't beat that. And they're wonderful and it's gonna be fun. So I would like to encourage all of you guys, or if you know anyone, again, this does not obligate you to be a support group leader with me by any means, but what it does do is just help you to know more about what I'm doing or what, and I'm going to learn, I'm going, I've got to learn because there's lots of stuff there so that we can all be better support group leaders to help each other. So this is all on our website. If you have not been to our website, our website is awesome. All of this is on there. And again, you can sign up totally free. Okay, moving right along. Today's topic again is going to be with all care therapies, all care therapies. You can see we have up there, they do physical, occupational, and speech therapies. They're, they're all together and they're just 
right here in Georgetown. You got the owners right here. In fact, if, ladies, if y'all want to come on up, uh, you can see what their mission and goals are. I'm going to let them speak. And yep, that's it. I just wanted to be sure. Uh, let's see. There we go. I am now going to stop this one. Stop share. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All righty. And I'm going to turn it over to them. Okay. Let me introduce yourself. I will. I'm going to pull up my slides. Is that Mrs. Bond? Yes. Perfect. Is that okay? Of course, Do I? Of course. And they can see this or no? Let's see. Oh, sure. They will. But I've got to. Uh, I've got to come in a different way. Give me a second. Sure. Okay, that's what it is. Uh, that you can be talking to them about. Sure. Sorry. I'll introduce myself. I'm Tiffany. Um, I'm the director of the PT program there and also part owner at All Care. Um, I got to meet a few of you guys uh, last month um, at the symposium. So um, I apologize if I'm going to give a little bit of a repeat with my section that I get to chat with you all about, but then you get these three lovely ladies after me that kind of gets to give you some new, uh, fresh um, information about what uh, physical, occupational, and speech therapy can do for y'all um, and really allow you guys to take charge of your diagnosis with Parkinson's, um, to live your, continue to live your active lifestyle um, without any limitations. I truly love the, the programs that uh, are available for. And I'll let you do the slideshow. I don't know how to. That's okay. Yeah, when you need to do the slideshow. I can just leave it like this and we can flip through too. I can play the. Um, if you click this, that makes the slideshow right here go there forward. There it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Yep. And then Janie can click on through. Which one is this? On stage, I'll sneak on up. Whoop, I gotta get out of the way. <laughs> I can, I'll walk on over the stage. All right, so Janie, go ahead and go on to the first slide. Um, so I always love statistics and stories. So I'm sorry, I pro I'll try not to tell too many stories so I can share time with the rest of my crew. Um, but one thing that I do find really um, interesting, important, that's gonna kind of lead in my conversation that we're gonna have together um, is that there's about 8 million people living worldwide with Parkinson's. That's a pretty significant number um, that's out there. What's also pretty wild out there, that prevalence of those diagnoses is supposed to double by 2040. And that's big, that's huge. And so in theory, why this is important because it's not only affecting you and your family, um, but it's also affecting um, the economy, our society um, with this increase in diagnosis. Um, and the sad truth, um, it makes people pay more attention to this diagnosis, but let's look at the positive. And the positive is that means more money is going into this diagnosis, more research is going into that diagnosis, which is fantastic for y'all because there's a lot of great findings that are out there to help you guys um, and programs that are out there, uh, not only pharma pharmacological or surgical, but also with uh, your exercise classes and your therapies that you guys get to be a part of um, as well too. So what I want to do is kind of highlight some of the cool research that's coming about that's specific to exercise and uh, exercise with movement and then also exercise with uh, your voice as well too. So these are just four bullet points of four different articles that are out there. There's so many in regards to physical exercise, but this top bullet point uh, describes about how forced exercise can improve uh, symptoms in Parkinson's disease. And the changes seen in the brain connectivity is actually very similar to the, uh, the changes that are seen actually with medications as well. That's huge. So when I say forced exercise, that means that exercise that's just taking you a little bit out of your comfort zone. It's pushing you hard. Um, and when we push you hard with those exercises, you're getting that much of a change in your brain that it's the same thing as medications. I want to highlight that I'm not saying to not take your medications, but exercise is really important for you guys to do just like your medication. It's really important for you to take on a regular basis. Um, another research article looked at aerobic exercise, and it not only promotes physical fitness, um, 
in yourself, but it also improves your cognitive and procedural functioning. Really important. We know that with Parkinson's disease, sometimes it can be a little bit harder to process information um, and or um, higher functioning, higher cognitive skills. Keeping active, doing those aerobic exercises help you reduce those symptoms, which is a really fantastic finding that we're finding with exercise. Looking at aerobic exercise again, it also increases dopamine um, and stimulates brain activity. Again, awesome. We know our dopamine levels are low. So we really want to keep those dopamine levels high. So keep active with those exercises there. Um, and we're also finding in research that structural changes are actually happening within the brain when we do types of balance training. Um, so I guess the point here is that, you know, we think about just doing physical exercises just to stay active and save movement. And we don't, I want to highlight though, what is actually happening in the brain. There's a lot of what we call neuroplasticity, a lot of increased blood flow to the brain, a lot of um, different uh, shaping that's happening in the brain that can really help you um, fight off those symptoms. And again, like I said, take control of your, uh, your uh, diagnosis. Um, next slide. So I wanna look at voice exercises too, because it's so important to also recognize these. There's some good research articles that are out there that are looking at, at intensive speech treatment sessions that are targeting voice. Um, comparing it to also just uh, regular treatment uh, sessions that are focusing on articulation um, and compare it to individuals that don't do any treatment at all. Um, I have a few bullet points of, from multiple studies down here, but comparing those three specific treatment styles, it showed that the intensive speech treatment targeting the voice showed the most significant change with intelligibility. So intense voice treatment is so important for you to work on to keep that intelligible, intelligibility um, uh, nice and strong. Also, that voice treatment had a significant post-treatment improvements in phonation, which Janie's going to kind of jump into a little bit later here shortly. And not only that, it was uh, the best treatment option to be maintained seven months out. Um, another study showed that that intensive voice treatment, voice treatment resulted in the most long-lasting behavioral and neural effects. Again, the brain changes, they're happening. It's increasing that blood flow. So we're seeing a lot of that adapted, adapted I need to work on my uh, voice, right? Um, yes, yeah. Um, it really helps get that brain uh, developing and, and you know really countering a lot of those symptoms that you're seeing associated with that Parkinson's disease. Go on to the next slide. Another thing that we're seeing in, in research, voice exercises also really help with facial expressions. We know that plus, um, decreased face, facial expressions is very common with that Parkinson's diagnosis. Doing these voice exercises doesn't just increase your phonation and it doesn't just increase um, your, your clarity when you speak, but it also helps with your facial expressions, which is a huge part of communication. It's so important to have those facial expressions to be able to share your feelings while you're uh, communicating as well. Um, and one last study, because I love research, that LSVT Loud program has been studied and it also positively affects throat muscles for swallowing function and spontaneous cough effectiveness um, that helps with all, a lot of your voice complaints. Again, this is not my specialty. Janie's going to jump into this later, but there is so much good research that supports not only exercising your body, but exercising your voice to help you guys be um, take charge of uh, Parkinson's. So the point of all of that research that I gave you, I want to highlight that Physical exercises and voice exercises is also your medicine. It is your medicine, just like your levodopa that they prescribe you to take. So when you take your medicine on a regular basis, you should be doing your exercise on a regular basis. You should be doing your voice um, on a regular basis. And that the exercise and movement and combined with your surgical and pharmacological management um, makes you guys be able to attack this diagnosis as a whole. And it's really important. It improves brain function, it slows the disease progression, and it provides symptomatic relief and ultimately improves your every, everyday activities. It improves your ability to go out into the community without any limitations and still be active. So how and why do these programs work? What, what are we finding within the research program? 
we all know, obviously with Parkinson's, these are the common di- or symptoms that when I do an initial evaluations, I have patients that come in and talk to me and they say, oh, I'm getting a little bit of sm- uh, moving a little bit slower. My movements are getting smaller um, and getting stiff. Um, my balance is off. Uh, I'm having difficulty walking, walking, especially with turning, freezing episodes, feeling stocks, tremors. Those are very common, uh, you know, complaints that the patients that come into the clinic really, really work on. Um, but what also is really important to understand is, go ahead to the next slide, yes. Um, Parkinson's disease is not just a uh, motor dysfunction, it's also a sensory dysfunction. Um, so what happens essentially is we have decreased activation for internally generated movements. Um, our, percep- our perception of reality and our sen- as sensory systems, there's a, there's a motor mismatch, there's a miscommunication that's happening with our brain. Um, And that's what these symptoms are really targeting, not only the motor symptom complaints that you guys come in with the slowness and the stiffness, but we are attacking that sensory motor mismatch. That's so important. The one thing that I really, really want to highlight that makes Parkinson's a really um, unique diagnosis and an amazing diagnosis is it is the only diagnosis that's out there that can be rerouted. When somebody has a stroke and you ask them to move their arm, you can't, they've already developed symptoms that has increased tone or decreased or a lot of weakness in that arm and they can't uh, go ahead and reach forward necessarily, or it's still challenging. Individuals with Parkinson's, you guys can do it. You just need the right cueing. So our goal is to find a way to rewire your brain, get a different pathway so you don't have those things that are inhibiting you to be able to function. Find that alternative route that still exists within your brain um, to manage your symptoms and make it um, you guys so much more successful during your daily activities and lives. So to kind of reiterate this, what we're seeing without necessarily exercise, maybe with medications, um, we're seeing a downward spiraling effect. What we're seeing is um, this top here, difficulty in self-perception, awareness, um, okay, it does not recognize movements are small or slow. And we go down this spiraling effect where your self-cueing isn't as great as it used to be. Um, So you continually uh, have scaling or reducing the amplitude of movement patterns. And then all of a sudden you have smaller movements. Um, And then you again have decreased awareness and it keeps going down this this cycle and we get smaller and smaller, quieter and quieter, which ultimately leads to increased stiffness because we're not moving and all these secondary complications. So we want to counter that. So with utilizing in all the research that we found with how successful exercise can be with you. We have, have, we have programs that are out there that these ladies are going to uh, jump into here shortly that utilize that research, utilize that knowledge, just rewire that brain, just kind of I mentioned, find those alternative routes, um, focus on amplitude, focus on sensory awareness um, to address those non-motor symptoms and really make a change. And we're going to talk about those programs here shortly, but go ahead to the next slide, Janie. Um, And ultimately what these programs are going to do is it's going to improve your self-perception. It's going to improve your self-cueing. It's going to increase your amplitude and motor output. It's going to produce larger motion motions. And instead of spiraling downward, we're going to work on spiraling back up and we're going to be able to be a lot more functional um, without limitations. So implications for therapy. Can we teach individuals with Parkinson's disease how to internally adjust their faulty plan for appropriate forces? Absolutely. Um, can we improve sensory processing for improved error detection and error correction? Absolutely. You can start this, the, any one of these programs at any point in your disease process, you can start it really early on. And I'm telling you, I've had very high functioning where they came in for an eval and I'm like, shoot, I don't know. I might have a hard time challenging them, but I found a way and we've found different ways to make this program adaptable to their higher level. And then I've had patients that are a little bit further along and that's okay. Um, but we've been able to adapt these programs to really make a change in their life. Um, and I want to also give you the or tell you that this gives you the foundation. This gives you um, your roots. So when you can take this, so you can start right away and then take these roots, this foundation out to your exercise program, out to your dance programs, out to your yoga programs and learn. And we don't want you to have to keep coming back to us. We want to be friends. We don't want you to stop in the clinic and say hi, but we just want to give you that foundation so you can learn it. And then maybe every now and then we'll come back for a little boost session for, with these programs. And uh, we love doing that as well too. 
I'm going to briefly touch about physical therapy and LSVT big um, before these other girls jump in and talk about how OT and big uh, works together, how um, another program that's similar to big uh, power, Kayla's going to touch on that and Lainey's going to touch on the speech programs. Um, but when we talk about physical therapy and the big program, this is one of the first physical therapy, occupational therapy programs that developed. Um, it's an intensive program. I'm not going to lie. And I tell my patients straight up when they come in, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. And it's fairly rigid. There's some pros and cons of the program. And I'll give you both the pros and cons for sure. This program is pretty rigid. Um, you, they want you to do one hour therapy sessions for four times a week. That's a lot. Um, and then they wanted for you to do it four weeks straight. And I promise you, you're going to be tired, but I am doing those exercises with you. I'm tired with you. And I get my workouts in um, while we, while you do your workouts as well. When we're working together, our goal is going to be high intensity. Again, research shows that remember that first bullet point, forced exercises creates more uh, change in the brain, increases blood flow. So I'm pushing that forced exercise. I want seven out of 10 exertion level when I'm working with you guys. So I ask my patients if a 10 equals equals that you just ran a marathon, I want you close to that feeling. I want seven out of 10 exertion level and we're going to work hard, but I promise you'll make it through and the results are worth it in the end. Um, and your typical therapy session that's involved with the big protocol is very typical. It has that protocol that you follow. You do eight daily exercises um, that target specific movement components associated with Parkinson's disease. This also becomes your homework. And then we pick five functional tasks that you guys pick out. You tell us that you want to work on and we incorporate those every day into our, our therapy session as well. And we challenge those five functional tasks. We make them harder. So then when you actually have to do it in real life, it's easy peasy. Um, we always focus on big walking. And then we also uh, try to combine a lot of these activities to make them um, so you can go out into the community, put everything together and be as successful as possible. What I want to show you real quick is a couple of videos and, and success stories. Um, one is a promotional video um, at the LSVT Big website, um, but it is really fantastic to see what kind of change can happen. Um, this individual, 71 years old, there's a ton of videos on the LSVT website. So if you want to have, have more interest, go check them out. They're really great. This gentleman, 71 years old, he's been 14 years uh, since diagnosis. He was referred to PT for slowness, difficulty walking, falls, and freezing. His Parkinson's medications were optimized before starting LSVT Big. This is important to know. His medications didn't change from before and after. Um, and he just did that intensive one month therapy session. So one hour, four days a week for four weeks. And I wanna show you the fours and after. Go ahead and click on that, Janie, the blue hyperlink. Right here, the 71 year old, yep. Click on that and it's gonna give you the link to open up this, there you go. And then if you hit this um, down in the bottom, your right hand corner, it'll open this up to be a little bit bigger. Yep, that full screen, yep, right here. There you go, click that. So what you can see on your left is your before and on the right is after. On the left, the first thing that's notable to consider is this gentleman's walking with a cane. Um, on the right hand side, one month later, doesn't need the cane anymore. He is so much further past his speed, his, his arm swing, his, um, his stride is so much better. Um, and if you're paying attention to this gentleman on the left, you notice when he gets transitions, his transitions on the floor, he kind of freezes a little bit and it becomes fairly challenging for him to be able to cross those different variations in terrain, where the gentleman on the right has no issues kind of crossing some of those variations in terrain. Again, one month, that's huge. No medications changes. Um, it's, it's a game changer, I think. I'm a little biased on a PT, but I think it's fantastic. Um, go ahead, and if you hit the escape button or get out of that video, I want to show you one of my patients. Um, I think you can go back up to... Do you want to help with the Google Slides? I don't know. I get... Uh, let me see. This next video, while they're trying to get the PowerPoint back up, is a gentleman, and there's a short clip just of his walking forward and backward. He's actually my first patient I ever worked with in the LSVT big program. He is one of my favorite. <laughs> 
um, gentlemen that I've ever um, worked with. And maybe because it was my first time working in this program, I honestly only became certified because I had to teach this at the University of St. Augustine. I did some teaching uh, there. Now I'm at actually the University of Texas. Um, but at the University of St. Augustine, I had to teach it. So I was like, well, if I'm going to teach it, I might as well get certified in this program. But then my first patient came. I was like, shoot, I'm going to be nervous. I don't know if I can do this. Um, but we worked and we worked so hard. You can go actually to the next slide. Um, and the results were fantastic. When he first came to me, he had 11 years. He's been diagnosed for 11 years. His goals were dressing. He said that he couldn't put on his pants anymore without stumbling and falling. Um, he had a really hard time getting out of the chair. Um, couldn't really get up off the ground. Stepping backwards was a challenge. Couldn't climb ladders. He was still very active with climbing ladders to be able to fix things at his house. Go ahead and click that blue hyperlink. And this is gonna be a quick video, but look at the pace change with his walking. Check out the arm swings. Bottom right hand corner, there should be an expansion, double arrow. Yep. And then go ahead and push play on that bottom left hand corner. You got it. Um, so go ahead and look at the changes that are happening here. On the left is him walking, little stiffness um, without a uh, big arm swing. On the right-hand side, he's moving so much faster. His backward walking is significantly improved. And I'm not asking you to do backward walking all the time in your life, but one of the things why backward walking is so important is because when you start stumbling backwards, you need that reaction to go ahead and catch yourself. That's why it's important to go ahead and work with those. But it is, it's a, you can do so much in one month. And quite frankly, I've been practicing for 11, almost 12 years now. I don't think I've ever seen this fast of a change in any one of my patients that I've worked with. So I hope that you guys take this information and utilize it. Come to All Care if you want, but you don't even have to come to All Care. Find a therapist that's certified in some of these programs. You can do wonders. And I hope that it encourages you to um, uh, keep on working. But the next person that's going to come up is Kayla. Kayla is one of my PTs and she's certified in the power program. So she's going to tell you a little bit about the difference with the power program. Thank you. Awesome. Hello, everyone. I am Kayla. Um, thank you, Tiffany. Um, I'm one of the PTs at All Care. And like she said, I am certified in power. So I'm here to bring you a little bit of information about just another treatment approach, another option. Um, power stands for Parkinson's Wellness Recovery. Um, next slide. It was developed by a physical therapist named Dr. Becky Farley. And it is based off the principles and research that support the LSVT big program to was talking about. Um, it, can y'all hear me? Okay. It was great. Um, it utilizes the same. I am training. Maybe I need to move. Okay. It utilizes the same high amplitude training um, as LSBT big and some of the same principles supported by the research. Um, but Dr. Farley's motivation with developing this other program is to create a program um, with a flexible and adaptable protocol. So it's just a little bit different than LSVT big, another option for individuals to choose from. Um, I like to think of it more as a framework or a set of principles and methods um, that can easily be adjusted and applied to any individual um, across their treatment sessions to target different symptoms associated with Parkinson's. Um, so I've really enjoyed the adaptability of the program and I appreciate how different it can look for all the people I work with, um, in different stages and with different motor concerns. Um, it targets four motor control skills and is made progressively more physically and cognitively challenging, um, to target most of the major motor and non-motor symptoms in, P in Parkinson's disease. Um, so before we get into actually what power would look like, um, just a few important exercise principles um, that Tiffany touched on already, um, but the research really supports early exercise, um, high intensity exercise and complexity. So we use all of these principles within the program, um, trying to start off as early as possible to get a really good foundation, like Tiffany said, and then take that out into the community with all the other great programs that are offered. Um, high intensity, so working a little bit beyond our own self-selected effort level um, is highly supported by research. And then we utilize varying complexity, continuous practice, and task-specific practice to make the most out of our sessions. So after all, we get good at the exact things that we practice. So being very specific about our interventions and why we're using them for a specific goal um, is extremely important. 
Um, so the power moves are based around skills that you learned during development. Um, and they're put into four core moves. These are skills that underlie everything we do in our day-to-day -day life. Every movement that we make, you can break down into at least a at least one of these core moves. Um, and the research shows that um, these, are the, these are the skills that commonly begin to deteriorate among people with Parkinson's. Um, so that's why they're utilized in the treatments. Uh, we retrain these skills so that we maintain them, get better at them, and move about our lives with efficiency and um, reduced motor concerns. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we can perform the four moves in several different ways, different positions to mimic daily mobility um, and, and different coordinated patterns um, so that we can have an impact based on how we perform them on stiffness, slow movements, balance impairments, things like that. Um, the goal though, so we'll go to the next slide. What's the goal? Um, a few definitions are really important. Uh, mobility, it's our ability to move about freely and easily. <coughs> Function, it's our ability to perform all of our ADLs. So we put those together and we have functional mobility. Um, that is the main focus, not only with, with power, but also with um, LSVT big, but in our treatment for when we're working on many of these concerns. Um, what does a power session look like? The um, there show, isn't a uh, the specific framework like Tiffany presented with LSVT big in terms of the number of sessions and how that is structured. Um, but usually with the power session, we begin with some, some type of higher intensity, <sighs> kind of repetitive fluid exercise. So usually this is a bicycle. It can be brisk walking, something like that to get the heart rate elevated get some blood flowing. And we do this prior to our neuromuscular re-education, which is the power moves, in order to promote what's called neural priming. Um, this gets the brain really ready to rewire these motor patterns um, so that we make the most out of our treatment session and taking it home, you have that carryover that we want to apply it to later in your day-to-day -day life. Um, the four main moves that I mentioned are based off of um, uh, our, our what we grew up is um, anti-gravity extension. That's the first one on the left. And we call that the power up. Um, it is designed to um, strengthen our extensors and stretch the front of our body um, in order to promote improvements in posturing. Uh, this is really important because as we know, throughout life, gravity brings us forward. And a lot of times that can be something a lot of people come in with a complaint of that they're kind of in this little bit of a stooped posture. So we work on that extension, help bring the body upright, promote that optimal alignment. And it's really important for many more things than we realize that actually helps us to improve our step length. Cause if we're forward, it's going to be harder to take a, a big step, but once you're upright, you can take that big step and open up. Um, Let's see here. I got, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, <laughs> that's my fault. Um, it also helps to improve our center of gravity because if our center of gravity is forward over our base of support, it's gonna throw your balance off forward. So being upright helps you keep your balance, um, make your walking more efficient. We also work on the on weight shifting. So that's called the power rock. That's the second move of the four. Um, it's really important to target move, um, imp improvements in movement initiation. So sometimes um, people ex experience that hesitation with producing a movement. The power rock is utilized in order to overcome that. Really focus on that weight shift for transfer. Um, axial mobility is the third, and that's called the power twist. Um, so that's not a, uh, something if we're not intentional about, sometimes we don't do a whole lot of rotating, um, intentionally, even though it is involved with things like getting up out of bed, moving from one place to another, getting in and out of the car it's required of us. Um, so it's really important to use those two moves together, the weight shift and the twist in order to help with all these different types of transfers. Um, and then finally working on transitions. So that's the fourth move. It's called the power step. Um, and it helps us to move in different locations um, in space and the goal of improving our efficiency and effectiveness. Um, obviously, we use stepping patterns all the time when we're walking around, moving about our life. Um, but we also need to think about, too, if, if our balance is a little thrown off, we're constantly using a stepping reaction to try to, try to right our balance. Um, 
So basically, those are the four moves. We'll go through them in so many different ways. We can perform them really slowly where we can focus on getting a big amplitude movement, really get those nice big movements. Um, we can do them a little bit faster, but still big, where we're really addressing that bradykinesia, which is um, the, the, the slower movements. Um, and then one of my favorite things to do too is add that cognitive challenge in with these moves in a flow. So performing one after the other or just a few in a sequence that's changing. So we really challenge the brain to go back and forth between different tasks and switch from one to another. Um, and it provides a really great challenge, more similar to how we move um, in our day-to-day -day anyway. Um, so I, like I said, I've really enjoyed using power. I've seen some really great benefits for the people that I've worked with. I love how adaptable it is. So what might be a power session for one person will be completely different for another. Um, and that's just really exciting to me. So we can customize towards any individual's goals. Now that this is up, it may be a little difficult to see, but all of this can be also seen on the power website. So great resource if you're interested in learning more. Um, but I put just three of the positions here that you can do um, one exercise. So this is the power up that I talked about for that extension strength performed in seated, standing, and on your back. And so that's, um, those are only three of the options, but we can do it on hands and knees, on your stomach, um, to mimic whatever we need to for, for your day to day. Um, I think that was my last slide. Yeah, that one. Perfect. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have after the rest of the presentation, but thank y'all so much. I'm going to pass it over to Becca now. Hey guys, I'm Becca. I'm the occupational therapist, or a occupational therapist at All Care. Um, okay, so. Oh no, that's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be hard. Okay, so we all need to engage in activities in life that are that feel meaningful and that keep us independent, whether in our work, our hobbies, our social life, or simply just like taking care of ourselves. Our overall goal is to um, increase one's safety, security, and functional independence as symptoms progress. Whether you've been living with Parkinson's for one month, five years, 20 years, and whether your goal is playing tennis or spending time with your family, our approach is the same, to find ways to match your personal strengths with activities and, and an environment that will help you reach that goal. ADLs like bathing and dressing, eating, um, sleeping, and even walking that were once second nature can become very challenging. And those, change, those challenges can be very frustrating and hard to adjust. Um, but there are ways to improve safety while supporting a good quality of life. That's, the, that's my main goal. I want to increase your confidence, your hope, and just get you back to what you were doing. Um, Okay, so at the initial time of the diagnosis, um, OT can provide education and support to the individual. They can continue to fully participate in family, work, and community roles. As symptoms progress, we can help with adapting activities and the environment to improve um, safety within the home. Strategies can be discussed for the individual to continue participation in meaningful occupations, cognitive engagement, um, and caregiver education. Okay. So uh, these are some adaptive tools. I love adaptive tools when they're needed, but sometimes they're not needed. Um, so, uh, like this spoon right here can help with some tremors uh, with micrographia. If you're handwriting or fine motor skills are just a little shaky or you're having trouble with these type of activities, you can always thicken the grip, make it easier um, so you're able to write for a prolonged period of time, um, help with dressing or even cooking um, a rock or knife. But so we've always, OTs have always been good at teaching pay, uh, like people how to adapt devices and clever compensation, um, common sort. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, common story strategy. <laughs> um, while this is still true, one thing that I've learned um, with uh, the use of adaptive devices is that they're not always needed. For example, if we can address the underlying deficit of hypokinesia by driving amplitude needed for a task such as buttoning a shirt, the, the uh, patient can perform the task without even learning how to do a button hook or avoid buttons altogether. I can't tell you how many people come in and they just, they don't, 
they just avoid it um, just because it's hard or it takes a long time to do something and frustrations there, you're trying to get out of the house. So what can we do about that? This is why I love finding adaptive equipment that works um, for my patient's occupational performance, but why not try to perform the tasks like you've always learned it? Um, that's where big comes in. Uh, the goal to, uh, big is effective, science-backed, um, empowering program for people of all stages of Parkinson's, as Tiffany addressed earlier. It addresses not only the movement is issues, but it also takes into account the non-motor symptoms, including the emotional and cognitive changes. The goal of big is to recalibrate a person's perception of movement so they can use a simple internal cue of big in every life, no matter what the task is. Um, big reteaches you how normal movements should feel. Often these movements feel silly and um, strange at first, too big, even though you're comparable, you're comparable to those people around you. Over time, you learn to recognize these larger movements as your new normal. So as I said, it's intensive one-on-one -on -one treatment. It could be done by, it could be with PT or OT, or if the goals align, you can do you can split it between two days a week with PT, two days a week with OT, depending on what your goals are. So I think it's really important when you come in to have, I know caregivers have goals, right? But what is your personal goal? What do you want to get better at? What do you need to improve your quality of life? Um, that's sort of where I come in. I just want to make sure that we are safe and we are able to engage in those things that are meaningful to us. So let's really dig into what's important to us. Um, because um, Parkinson's makes it harder to remember those bigger movements consistently. So treatment includes a lot of repetition, progressive challenges, as well as daily home um, practice and assignments to use bigger movements in life. Um, yeah, so I will show you a video is a promotional video off big, but this is pretty cool. So just notice the changes in him in general, overall changes after, after he does it. Good, and I want you to just kind of uh, notice as you're watching Bob do movements. Kind of the, it's a very slow, small, small kind of movement that he's using to try and get those buttons through the buttonhole. <laughs> and this can be a very frustrating thing for a lot of people, Bob. You're not alone in that. Does the top button tend to be one of the hardest ones for you? Okay, okay. Good, you got it though. All right. Let's do it. Ready? One, two, three. Go again. One. Really push it in hard. Nice. About a third of the time. You're right. You're right. Good job. This is my favorite. Now go back in and close it like you're angry with it. Really push it in strong. Yeah. Nice. Look at that confidence. Even quicker. Uh, even quicker. You're right. I haven't done button that quick and I don't know how long. So these seem very small, like, I mean, but I mean, that could change a day, um, being able to get dressed by yourself, those fine motor movements. Yes. The bigger movements, the gross motor is very important and it's where PT targets, but I want to see the fine motor movements. So like even Tiffany has a great story of, um, somebody just manipulating a puzzle piece after doing those finger flicks with it. They couldn't do it before. And so look at your hobbies, look at what you're interested in, um, and come visit us at all care. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. If you have any, I'm going to pass it over to Janie. I can't hear you. Sorry to disturb you guys. Oh, hey, Jane, you're all right. How are you doing? 
Okay, who has heard this said in their house? I'm not mumbling. Anybody? Little a hand raise. Yeah, no. All righty. Who has responded? Well, you just can't hear me. Uh huh. Okay, I see a couple of those. All righty. Uh, move on. So, in our in speech and communication, um, a lot of times, and Tiffany spoke on this, it's their perception. Folks with Parkinson's um, have that decreased um, feedback loop where they're not realizing that they're not speaking as loud as they should be. Um, it, we, we often do a like a little diagram and give the patient, you know, are you speaking at a one, a two, or a three? Three being loud, okay? The patient will often say, I'm speaking at a three. And then the, the caregiver, the loved one would say, uh, it's a one or a two. So a lot of times the patient does not have that self-perception that they're so soft and they're talking way down here where we need them talking here. They have the perception they're talking here, but they're actually down. And so we need to get them up in their voice. Uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, let's go back one. Oh, I lied. Go there. All right. Parkinson's, nope, I want that one. <laughs> All right. Parkinson's disease, and, and I, as I've worked with my uh, patients over the years, it's a thief, right? Parkinson's disease is a thief. It's a thief of movement. It's a thief of speech, voice, swallowing, and it's a disease of smallness. Tiffany already mentioned how small, you know, as movements start going on, so they start getting smaller and smaller. And so in, in the speech world, when I think about that, I think about your, your vocal volume. Well, it's related to your posture, your breath support. And so if you're kind of leaning over like this, and many folks, you know, posture changes. If you're leaning over like this, can you get a good breath? No, no. And so if you don't get a good breath, then your voice becomes smaller, right? Okay, when your voice becomes smaller, when your vo vocal production, then this area is not motivated, not exercised. You know what else can follow next? Swallowing can become difficult. So let's just talk about the speech, the speech disorders. Um, some of the first signs might, might be reduced vocal volume, hoarse sounding vocal quality, frequent throat clearing, trailing off at the end of sentences. Okay, where you're talking along, talking along, and then you're talking along, and then you're talking along like this. I always say, listen, you're not from West Kentucky. I grew up in West Kentucky, and the farmers there, well, they'll be talking like this, and they don't move their mouth at all. They're just talking about their cow down the road, and, you know, they're not moving their mouth. And so you're leaning in, you're leaning in, and you can't hear them. So a lot of times, my, some of my patients may say, you know, hear me say, Get out of your West Kentucky. I need to hear you, need to see mouth movement and on onward. So mumbled or garbled speech, um, inconsistent production of voice. Go on in the next one. Parkinson's can affect swallowing. In fact, I was reading an article yesterday where 80% of folks with Parkinson's may have some degree or level of swallowing difficulty. That's 80% of folks with Parkinson's. So um, some of the initial signs or symptoms might be drooling, coughing during or after eating or drinking, sensation of the food or, or pills getting stuck in your throat, um, unexplained weight loss. Now you think, well, how can that be a sign of um, swallowing difficulty? Well, if you're sitting there eating and it's taking you 45 minutes to an hour to get your meal done, it's because you're, you're automatically starting to slow down. Well, the um, dietitians out there say, well, if you, if you eat fast, you um, tend to not fill up, right? And so you eat more, you gain weight and get overweight. Conversely, if you eat slowly and over time, 
you fill up faster and then you say, well, I'm just not hungry anymore. And so ensues weight loss. Difficulty coordinating medication management. I like to highlight that one because um, you've got a pill and you've got liquid. And you got, that means you've got a solid and a liquid. If you have starting with some um, lack of oral movement or reduced mouth movements, you start to begin to have um, difficulty. The tongue has difficulty deciding whether it needs to pay attention to the pill or the water. And so you may, the tongue may decide, well, I'm gonna pay attention to this pill. And so then the water goes south and what happens? <coughs> you begin to choke. I choke every time I take my medicine. We can talk to you about ways to coordinate that. Maybe put your medications in a little dollop of um, applesauce or something like that. I'm not prescribing that, but that is something that can be a suggestion. All right, move on. All right, there's two systems and uh, Tiffany kind of alluded to them. I'm gonna now use a, a more technical term. There's a system called extrapyramidal and pyramidal tracks. These are the tracks that go down from the brain down through our body to tell our body what to do. The extrapyramidal is where Parkinson's likes to target. It targets the, and these are the things that are dependent on dopamine, the walking, the talking, the eating, dressing, swallowing, everything that we're talking about today. The, so those, those are the extra pyramidal. Those are the fine motor. Those are the tuners. The pyramidal tracks are Parkinson's foe, okay? They're not dependent on the dopamine to a large extent. These are the purposeful actions. Um, Tiffany or Kayla might have said something about you want to reach out and get this. Well, someone with a weak arm is going to have a tough time. But someone with Parkinson's might just kind of have trouble getting there. But if we can cue the system, you can reach out there and grab that and get that pin. Otherwise, you might be just going a little bit slower. But if you use your cues, you can get that sucker and do what you need to do with it. So that's the, we're engaging the pyramidal system in our therapies, okay? Move on. All right, there are two um, programs out there. One's called Speak Out and one's called LSVT. And now I wanna get, talk a little bit about LSVT. LSVT um, was started out in Colorado, I believe that's right. Um, and it stands for Lee Silverman Voice Treatment. And you might think, well, Lee Silverman must be a pretty hot dog um, speech therapist. No, it was the, the lady, it was the mother, it was the grandmother that had Parkinson's. And she went to a speech therapist and said, you know, I'm, you know I, I know there's a way I can, you know, communicate better, better. And the daughter was saying, mom just wants to be able to talk, you know, a little stronger to us. And so her name was Miss Lee Silverman. And the speech therapist began working with her and been developing this program of LSVT Loud. And the patient got better and better and better. And so they decided to patent that and just, you know, name that as Lee Silverman Voice Treatment Loud. And now that became so success, successful, then the, I'm not sure who the um, physical therapist that came along and started say, well, you know, if that works for speech, let's do it for physical therapy too. And so they developed that and grew that program. So you see, that's where it came from LSVT loud, LSVT big, and the whole corporation or the umbrella is LSVT global. And that's where, that's where you would type in to find that information. Um, Speak Out. Speak Out is a same type of program, same type of effort, much like Power is the same, you know, very similar to LSVT Big. Speak Out was born um, out of a lady that was doing therapy in her home that was LSVT loud certified. And she said, you know, I, I need to tweak this a little bit and just make some different little changes. And so she developed the um, Speak Out. So both programs work on intensity 
amplitude, movement, vocal ability, the whole works. Um, they both teach intense, intent, purpose, and loud instead of relying on those automatic speech production. When we intentionally or deliberately use our speech and voice, we use the systems that are less dependent on dopamine. So the intentionality of it. Um, so both programs work on daily variables uh, to, for with speech and voice. They do a warm up exercise or functional phrases. They do a sustained awe. They do vocal glides and they do hierarchy. Hierarch <laughs> um, I'm having Tiffany's problem there. Um, hierarchy and hierarchy of speech task. So they'll start at phrase level. They'll go into sentence level. They'll go into paragraph level. They'll go. They'll. They may spend a session going to a grocery store with the patient, where he has to go up to the meat counter and ask for the sirloin strip cut, yay, thick, whatever. So it's a, employing a lot of um, spontaneous and effortful voice. Move on. <coughs> the speak out sessions are generally scheduled three times a week for approximately four weeks at 45 to 60 minutes uh, per session. So they're not, it's not as rigid as the next slide. LSVT, pr pretty much if someone's going to do LSVT loud as LSVT big, <coughs> the person needs to attend four times a week, um, four weeks at 60 sessions, at 16 sessions at 60 minute treatments. If the person's doing less than that, other than the combined, if they do two days OT, two days PT, <coughs> I'm having voice trouble. Um, so they have they have to do it in that manner to, for it to be called LSVT loud. Thank you. I got one up here. I got this. Yeah. And that's one thing I'm going to say. If you come see me, bring your water bottle. <laughs> All right, so all care therapies of Georgetown are speech pathology, uh, speech pathology services. We both have um, LSVT loud and speak out certified clinicians in our building. Um, we all have, you know, multiple years experience. Um, I happen to be doing this for quite some time. Um, and the thing that I bring to the table is my dad who lives in West Kentucky, um, developed Parkinson's and um, he had, he was in the medical field. He's, he's a veterinarian. So he said, I'm, I'm a better doctor than the other doctors because, you know, I have to know what's wrong with my patient instead of my patient telling me. That's a little funny about him. But um, I would send these exercises, you know, up, up to West Kentucky. I said, do these, do these. And, and I had him on the phone. Okay, do it with me. And he would do a great job. Um, with me, but yet he wouldn't follow through. And that's the other thing that I think Tiffany and Kayla and, and Becca would say, you can, it's fine to come to therapy, but if you're going to leave and not do it at home, you might as well not even do it. Okay. It's an important thing. And I've, I've come up with the adage of no longer is therapy done to you. You do therapy. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, you know, there was a lot of the mentality and the therapy said, you know, come in, we'll do therapy, you know, for you. But now with how insurance is and um, the shortened lengths of stays, you have to do therapy yourself. No longer are those days of it having it done to you. You got to do it. Uh, let me see. All right. All care therapies, um, Medicare, it's a Medicare covered service. It's a, uh, we are approved for Medicare, or uh, you may have a co-payment along with that. Um, our point, we have appointments available. And this is our, my final thing, speech, occupational and physical therapies can help you balance the whole system by working on big, loud, purposeful movements 
during your daily activities and communication exchanges to help you live better with Parkinson's. And now I'm gonna bring up the other staff here. Um, any questions? We wanna open it up for questions now. And you wanna, yes. You want to speak to that? Yeah, is there a right, right? Um, if yeah, I'm gonna, uh, the question was if you have gone through loud or big LSVT loud or LSVT big or speak out. Do you need to do the other counterpart? And my answer is no. Um, what each program is complementary of the other. They both are emphasizing intensity, um, amplitude, practice, and developing it into your daily. Now, having said that, can you go back and get another session? Do you have to do it right after the other? Um, it depends on you. Yeah, it depends. I, yeah, um, it depends on the therapist who you come to. Um, what is the meaning? Uh, you know, um, how well you adapted to that program. Um, I've had people come back to do um, work with me following Parkin, you know, the Parkinson's diagnosis, and they did LSVT 10 years ago. And um, they come back, you know, I don't want to do that at all again. I said, well, let me, let me show you this program. And then they said, yeah, you know, I, I want to do that. Um, it is recommended after you've gone through a therapy uh, to come back for a recheck six months later. Are you keeping up your vocal quality? And then you can say, well, you know, I need a little shot in the arm and maybe um, two to three weeks, you know, get another little shot in the arm of either LSVT loud or, um, or speak out, or I'm sure power or big. I don't think they would have to come back for a full zone after they've done six, um, you know, after six months, but speak yeah. to that. Yeah, so I agree. Um, it's not necessarily that you should do the other if you haven't done it, right? But I think the biggest difference, I mean, it's all the same principles, right? We It's research supported in the same ways and, and performed in the same ways. But I think the biggest difference, at least between big and power in the PT department, is some people aren't aren't interested in the schedule of, of an hour, four days a week for four weeks. So that flexibility is a little bit of appeal to someone, especially if they're involved in other group exercise classes, because there's so many around. Um, I would say that that's my, my biggest thing is that a lot of people have that draw towards a little bit more flexible of a program. And then I have worked with individuals that have had a uh, big years ago, whatever the timeline may be, and are doing power, just a new approach, a new kind of idea behind working through challenges. Um, but to piggyback off what Janie said too, a huge thing is that it's PT, speech, OT in doses, right? For for life, you know, when, whenever you have um, a decline in some sort of skill or something's, you know, becoming really tricky for you and we need to get like a tune up on it, I think that's the biggest thing is it can really serve as a, a great tune up. Okay. Okay. I got another thought. Okay. Go. The other thing, and I think Kayla was alluding to this, is that once you graduate, you know, after a big program or a power program, speak out, LSVT big, uh, LSVT loud. It doesn't stop there. And back to uh, therapy is not done to you. You have to do therapy. You have to continue. Parkinson's is not over with after our, your four weeks. Okay. Your Parkinson's is that diddly dang disease that is going to hang on with you, but you now have tools to kick it in the butt and, and just say, you know, you're going to go down the road a little bit. I'm going to keep living. And so you got to keep doing your exercises. Does it mean you do them, have to do them twice a day? No, once a day is good. 
Um, just like um, Stephen uh, mentioned a little while ago, having the voice classes, then there's the 413 um, boxing. You know, there's a lot of things out there to keep you motivated and keep you moving, keep you speaking. Um, but if you just stop and say, well, I had therapy. It didn't do me any good. Well, it was about three months ago. Well, have you done your therapy? No. <laughs> so, you know, you, you've got to do it. Another question. Any other thoughts, ladies? Yep. Back where? Okay. Do you have to have a doctor's referral? Um, with physical therapy, they have direct access. In the state of Texas. So in the state of Texas, we do have, now have direct access. It's state dependent. Obviously, we'll speak solely for Texas because we're here. Um, but we only are allowed, even with our direct access, to only get um, 10 days worth of therapy before we need a doctor's referral. So we can't squeeze this all in. Um, but what you can do, um, uh, we have a lot of patients will, that will call our front office, mention that they would like to come into the clinic. Um, and our front office, if you let us know what the physician provider or that you're working with, um, we can fax off to the physician provider, request a referral. And if you've been um, at your physician's office and then your or the recent um, past, um, a lot of times those physicians will have no issues signing that, that referral over and we'll get you in as soon as possible. So even though we have direct access, unfortunately, it hasn't developed quite far enough yet in Texas, but hopefully fingers crossed soon. <laughs> we, we, do. we do have some um, cards back there on the table. So if anybody wants to um, give this to your pr uh, provider, neurologist, or anybody and saying, hey, I'd like to I'd like to do some uh, speech therapy. I'd like to do some physical therapy. I, I think we have, I brought some prescription pads that you could take that prescription to your doctor and say, would you fax this to, you know, sign it and fax it to uh, the um, all care. And then our front office will boom, you know, take you from there. And if you can't decide between, if you can't decide between physical therapy or occupational therapy, because they both do the program, really think over like, what are your personal goals? What do you want to do? Um, I mean, if you have questions, call and be like, hey, can some, can a therapist just give me a call? Because I'm just, I don't know which route to go. Give us a call. We all talk to you. I mean, very friendly. Um, and I, I think you really need to invest in Parkinson's. We're here, we're there. Like you need to invest. Um, this is, this is our journey that we're on now. So I think, let's become friends, you know, you're going to need us. Um, so if you can't decide, reach out and we can, we can help guide you and you can talk to your doctor about it. So, yeah. Any more questions? We have a question yeah. from the zoom audience. Let me tell you, I love Pilates, so I can't discourage it. Um, but remember the principles of these programs, right? Big, amplitude, uh, forced exercise. Um, and if anyone's familiar with Pilates, it's an amazing strengthening tool too. Um, it really recruits your muscles in the right synchronous uh, way where you really uh, activate your core and then you get a lot of muscle elongation with strengthening thereafter. Um, I wanna remind people, um, the reason why these programs work is because we push amplitude, because we push force. So that's, I, it's not that I don't rec, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll get to this. It's not that I don't rec recommend Pilates. I think you need this for your foundation. And then go to Pilates because Pilates is fantastic. Um, it is such a, a great exercise program that works on flexibility. It works on core strengthening um, and, and excellent ways that can really help you as an individual with Parkinson's disease. So give the therapies the opportunity to give you the tools, your foundation, utilize what you taught with us, take it out to your dance programs, take it out to Pilates, um, and you can be really successful. And that can be a great way to have your carryover. It's time for some voice exercise. So you haven't gotten rid of Janie yet, but at least it's going to be a little bit more fun and interactive. Oh, oh yeah, she'll be too loud. <laughs>
right now, I would like to give a round of applause to this awesome group. They are wonderful. They are located right there on Williams Drive, but more importantly, they offer the full package in regards to therapies. And I believe, I know Medicare covers it, but does it only cover it once a year or? No. Um, so Medicare and all insurances, and obviously each plan's a little bit different. Um, if speaking of Medicare in particular, what uh, in theory, there's a Medicare cap um, that you can only spend so much per a year. Um, but if it is medically necessary, Medicare will still pay for services um, even after passing that cap. If you go and just complete the big program or the lab program, um, it doesn't max that cap out. And again, say for instance, you want to work with speech therapy and then want to work with physical therapy, you might near that cap. I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. But again, if it's medically necessary and we can um, support it, then you can continue with therapy services. Um, I've had patients that have had um, multiple impairments that we've gone through the program have made significant improvements, but they weren't quite ready to leave therapy yet. And then we kind of adopted our uh, therapy sessions after we completed the program, but it's okay. We continued it because that was kind of their personal goals that we still wanted to work on. Um, and again, if it's medically necessary, you can continue on with uh, therapy services. Any other questions at all? No? Okay. Oops. Oh, it's all over. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, what we're doing, uh, and I'm looking right here, uh, she has, Janie's going to use her slides, but is that then, there? Yep. And then you just need to. Okay. I'm going to make sure they're on because I lost my slides somehow during this thing. Oh, my, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, and let me make sure the slides are coming through on the Zoom. Okay, so I'm checking my Zoom screen over here. Okay, We're cool. Good. We're good. All right, here we go. Okay, All right. actually, I'm not going to use it. Okay. Now, now I just got to tell, don't leave yet, because remember, we got door prizes. Got to go. Okay. energy you get one we, okay. do, we do need to use it oh lordy all right can y'all can y'all handle it <laughs> all right so here we go we're gonna do uh one more round okay all in one breath if you can good breath of air may me my mo moo 
excellent job. All right, so we would repeat that in session 10 times. But when the patient is working at home practicing, they only have to do it five times. But we're going to do 10, not here today, um, just to give you a little taste. The second one is sustaining all as long as you can. All right, this is not this is not this. Ah! So I knew I, I don't want to blow them away. I don't want you yelling and screaming. I want you to use your cheerleader voice. Okay, down here. Ah! Uh... Good. And in session, I'm going to start you out trying to get 15 seconds worth, okay? Some, some patients are like at eight, seven, six. Uh, they're not able to sustain, but you can do it, all right? Now, we're not going to do, we'll, we'll try 10 seconds. Are you ready? All right, good breath there. Uh, Some of you keep on going, way to go. <laughs> I thought, yeah, one of my old clients is, um, can do this for a long time. That's great. All right, the next one is glide, gliding up the scale and gliding down the scale. Now, why is that important? And a lot of people say, now, you're not going to make me a singer. I'm not a singer at all. But this is not what it's about. Think about your swallowing. In fact, put your fingers on your throat. Make a swallow. Do you, and I call it the goozle there. Do you feel your goozle move up and down? Yeah? Give me a head nod. Yes, no? You feel your goozle move up. All right. When you go up and pitch your voice box, now I'm going to uh, change the name, your voice box rises up and it then depresses when you come down. When we swallow, we use the same muscles and mechanism. That's why a lot of times we get this spread over effect of you're working on your voice, you're also working on your swallow too. So let's try it. <clears throat> Forgive me if I break here. I wanna start low and go high. Oh. Take a breath up here. You're up on top. You did it without me. All right, do it again. Oh. One more time. Oh. All the while, you're not going. Okay, we don't want yucky, screamy, yucky sound. We want vibrant. I had a patient today tell me, I can do this so much better now than I could in the beginning. Now he came in, he was a very mild case, but yet he has still noticed a difference. One other little caveat, he had to deal a lot with speaking on the speaker phone of his phone and dealing with um, receptionist wearing a mask, he goes, they could understand me. Where three, four weeks ago, they were not understanding him. So it works, guys. And he said, I understand it, what I'm doing. All right, the next thing is counting. This engages the mouth again, engages the breath support. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And as the program goes on, those those series get a little bit further. You go to one through four, and then five through eight, and, and on. So you you start to gather. So let's do a five. All right, count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now go on. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep going. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Go on to 20, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Do you feel a little tired in your, in your face? Yeah, so you're really using that. All right, then if you move on to the next slide. Another uh, task during this, you're gonna be doing reading. All right, can y'all see that well enough to read? All right, we're gonna read this fray. We're gonna go down the list, okay? So, ready? My name is Janie. Fine, thank you. You're kidding me. Answer the phone. I need coffee. You don't say. Have you seen her lately? Go to the next. Thank you so much. I hope so. It's better than before. Where's the paper? Speak with intent. Hold on a minute. Live with intent. All right. So you see you're engaging your mouth, you're engaging the vocal changes because you're doing inflection and so on. All right, one more cognitive exercise. This is the last one. That's your cue. <laughs> All right, cognitive exercise. We employ these. You've, you've heard um, Tiffany and Kayla and um, Becca talk about employing cognition along with this you got to get those brain uh, stimulated up there. So let's see who can do this. And I'm going to hold my, <laughs> I'm not going to hear you. Let me hear you count to 30 by three. Start. Three. Y'all did it. Good. All right, so you do that in a loud voice because you're stimulating that. I've had some patients go three, six, and so I've been really slow. I don't care, just stimulating. Name me five presidents. I mean, we're going to get random. All right, ready, go. <laughs> All right, good, good. And so that, that concludes the exercises. And then we would, we were panting, huh, we're done. All right, thank you. I think that's all that we have. All right, now we get to dance. <laughs> thank you so much. This is Janie and Janie is gonna be helping out uh, with our vocal classes, correct? And it, will it be, are y'all alternating or? And then he's going to be first and third. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Okay. Okay. Well, this is a uh, in progress. So, yep, yep, yep. We're getting getting started with that. Thank you, Janie. It was excellent. Thank you to all care therapies. It was wonderful. I am going to end theirs and. Um, Let's see, I'm going to have Luz, if you want to start coming up, Luz, we'll get you right there. And let's see here. Uh, I have to, for some reason, mine, a PowerPoint had gotten messed up. I hope it's not totally corrupted. No, there it is. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so let me come back to Zoom and share screen. Here I am, share and... Okay, Let's see, get your tickets ready too, guys. We're gonna be having our tickets. And let's see, slideshow. Nope, that gummit, that gummit. Okay, give me, there we are. That was thank you to them, our gaps mantra. Let me make sure I'm checking it with, I have two cameras going uh, later. Okay, so they should be seeing everything correctly. And what you did, we just, just did our exercise and with Janie Bush, and it was wonderful. And now we're going to dance with Luz. So Luz, would you like to come up here? Do you need to bring a chair up here? 
Okay, while Lewis is setting up, I'll go on and let you know. You want, here, you want got that chair? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Lewis is going to be doing our dancing class, and you're going to get to practice that. In the meantime, I'm also going to have uh, Carol and um, her helpers. I believe it's Barbara and uh, maybe Anita, she's gonna get some helpers. If you'll bring up the door prizes, we are just about ready. Oh, we've already got, them. gosh, they're ahead of me. Okay, super. Okay, so we'll be doing that right after and she's getting her music set up. In the meantime, I wanna ask how many, is this your first time to come to a GAPS meeting? Raise your hand. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I just wanna say welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, it, it's really, a, hopefully you, you're getting, it's, it's very educational. Some people thought support group meetings were pity parties, sit around in a circle and woe is me, but not here. We're gonna have fun. Now I do have a couple of announcements to be sure and let you know, again, Luz is setting up. Um, on the back table over there, we have donations or we have items that people have brought. I, as a registered nurse, am not endorsing anything, not giving anything, but if there is anything over there on that back table, you can certainly take it. If not, uh, we will be uh, taking them to uh, where the pharmacy staff will have to get, to, you know, get rid of that. But if there's anything you want, you can certainly take that stuff. Also, you can certainly take cookies home. Uh, we have plenty of cookies, I wanna do that. But for some of you who are new, as well as some of my existing folks, the way I get this place free of charge is that we have to put up the chairs and the tables. And we'll all be here to help out. I'll be putting up AV, but I've got several people that kind of show you. We put our chairs up on the racks, but that's your job if you don't mind helping me out because if not, I have to drag my husband and say, you gotta put every chair up, darling, you know, and he didn't like that. <laughs> okay, Liz, how are we doing? Are we just about ready? Yeah. Okay, oh, also, we have some sunglasses. Is anybody missing a pair of sunglasses? We found some sunglasses and there was a glass on the back table, right? Of this glass. We have two missing items as of today. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know which is which. Okay. I'll let you, here you go, uh, Carol. I'll let you pass all that stuff around. All righty. Now, before you do, let me get you up here because I'm going to do a stop share screen. There we go. And can you move that thing? Uh, yeah, just move it behind the screen. So that way. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now I did a stop share screen. Let me see why it's still up there on that screen. Um, oh, okay. Stop share. Hmm. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. Deb, do you have any suggestions here? I don't know what's going on. Why it's. Um, it's not showing up on Zoom. Okay. Um, simultaneously. So, do you not have anything at all right now, Deb? screen let me let me click on that one no i can see it on the screen but it's not coming from zoom okay now it's back on zoom okay it's back on zoom but you're seeing her let's dance uh one right yeah i see her as well oh you, you can see her also okay cool 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 i don't know why mine's not doing it then okay right, okay it's, it's gone you got her okay it's gone now oh, it's just gone see yeah, we just see her, so I don't see the Let's Dance uh, slide. Oh, okay, that's good. You just see her. As long as you see her, that's the important thing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to let her talk here. Luz Mendoza is our instructor for uh, dance class. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Just want to invite everybody on Wednesdays at 115. Join us. You don't have to remember anything. It's all fun. It's movement. And it's going home with a smile and we'll love to see you. It's free of charge. And we are just across the street at Grand Living every Wednesday, 1.15 till 2 p.m. If you have any questions, let us know after uh, the presentation. And I'm going to go over 
just the beginning of the song and then we're gonna come back and replay it so we can all do it together. Sit up straight, keep your feet on the floor and let's start dancing. How are you doing? Everybody's fine. That's great. Are we feeling it? Are we liking it so far? Can we all join us? Just follow, have fun, just move a little, put a smile on our face. Let's go. Do it again. Right here. Come on. Right. Oh. Give me a heart. Other side. Oh. Oh. So pretty in the sky, all the faces of me. What a wonderful thing. I think to myself, wonderful. Do you have any questions for Luz? No? <laughs> well, we are ready. Yeah, I think he is ready to dance there. <laughs> okay, but see, even if you don't dance, it's okay. Did you notice that we were on the chairs and doing that? We have a lot of fun with this. So I hope you will join us. It's free to you and it will be every Wednesday. We're changing the time to 1.15. Now, I did get an email that they were having a little difficulty with the sound, but hopefully the... Um, Hopefully my guys are able to hear this now. So we'll see that. Let me see here. Um, we have just one more. Let's see if we can get right over here. Okay. 
So that was Luz. Luz, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Just show up. Just show up. Yep. Right across the street. Okay. Also, just a. Yeah, at the Grand Living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right across the street. So I hope that you all will do it. Next month, August 25th, we are going to be having a, um, it's going to be on driving considerations and evaluations. Now, I've got to tell you, though, we're going to be in a new location. We, for one day only, uh, the church is having to use this building. So I'm going to be moving to what's called the McKinney Center, which is right there. It's First United Methodist Church. It's just a little bit farther down on Highway 29. So this is Highway 29 in front of us. We will be going uh, east. And so it'll be past the downtown. I'll have all the directions on there. Yeah, I'll have all the directions and stuff like that. Okay, also now I think we are ready to do our tickets. Okay, so I am going to stop share here and I am going to do a gallery view. So you can see we still have a few people with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those that are still with us. And uh, I, again, I don't know, it's not coming through Zoom, but I still have my PowerPoint up. But in any case, for those on the Zoom audience, I'm sorry, you'll be missing out a little bit on the uh, door prizes, but it'd be fun. All right, so here we go. How many door prizes do we have? Four, five, yay, okay. Now, remember, a lot of people have left, so your odds are even better now. Okay, I'll just look at the last three numbers. Three, two, six. You got it. All righty, all righty. Oh, did you hear that? Janie said, you got to say it out loud. Okay, and here we go again. Okay, the last three numbers, three, one, two. That's really cool. You put on in the keys, it helps to turn the key. Three, one, two. Okay, we're going to go again. That means that they must have left. Okay, so here we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Pull two. Uh, three, two, seven. <gasps> Yay! All right, all right. Okay. okay. And remember, everybody's a winner today because they all get to take some cookies home too. So anyway, uh, last three numbers, three, four, one. Yay! Okay, what is, what is he gonna get? A nice, whatever. I guess he gets it. There's one more. Is there one more left, Anita? Two. two more. Two more. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Okay, three oh three. Three oh three. Another winner. All right, all right. Okay, and now how many? One left. One left. Okay, here we go. Ready? The big winner. Big winner. Big winner. Three, two, eight. Three, two, eight. Going once, twice. Huh? Did we get it? Three, two, eight. Yay! All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. The, some of these are door prizes that were left over from our symposium that we pulled here, but I want to say thank you all for coming. But if you can help us, and Barb, while you're back there, if you can turn on the light for us like you did, but if you can help us put up the chairs, we greatly appreciate it, and then we'll bring down the tables and then take some cookies home. That'll be the last table to do. Okay, there we are. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye, Zoom crowd. Thank you, thank you. Okay.